All right, gonna be doing a quick New England Patriots 2024 mock draft video here. Um, I'll try to make it as concise as possible. I doubt it will be, but uh, a few updates. Really, the Patriots haven't really moved. Obviously, they're still a second overall right now in their draft order. <clears throat> draft order. The middle of the pack here is definitely changed up dramatically. Uh, I think that's something Patriots fans should be keeping an eye on because. When you, once you get into this area, there might be, quote-unquote, those runs on a wide receiver, a run on tackles, a run on corners, which obviously very picked, but what happens, you know, we're talking about the second, third, fourth round, you know, kind of really sets things up. So it'll be interesting how this shakes out. Another thing to keep an eye on is these guys that are returning for uh, another year of eligibility. Like It's a lot of guys that kind of would have been like that five, six, seventh round where, you know, yeah, they're probably like kind of third, fourth round talents, but this draft is so deep that they're, you know, someone's telling them they're probably going to be a sixth or seventh round draft pick. You can come back or transfer to another team, get a nice NIL deal, gets paid, possibly boost their draft stock. And then just by default, essentially just by drifting, they'll shift over to next draft, which is a weaker draft on paper than this one. So, you know, they're moving up by simply just hanging around another year. So that's those are a couple dynamics to keep an eye on. Um, now, a, a quick brief discussion, or I guess a, 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 re, a reminder or review that you know this upcoming draft is going to be key. Not because well we need to go get guys that are you know better. That's obvious. I think that when your team is you know only have a handful of wins on the season, it's not just like hey we need to get you know better because we stink. It's because we're going to be missing. We're potentially missing a lot of guys. Um, I would say, you know, we have about a dozen that are going to be up for free agency. There's also some retirement issues that could be popping up. So the, there's going to be turnover. And even if we go out and we re-sign guys, the problem is that we've re-signed some of our free agents this year. And then there's also some guys we should probably re-sign for next year on next year's uh, free agent class this offseason. Is... Um, it's going to soak up that all that cash and cap that we have, right? All that everybody's been talking about, about this year and next year. Well, the reason why you have it is because you have free agents. It, it doesn't appear out of nowhere. It's not just bestowed upon you. It's something that's a, a result of having, you know, contracts leaving. Now, we're not a team where, thank, you know, where you could look at the, the money being, you know, freed up, quote unquote, because, you know, we're losing, or, you know, that really bad wide receiver contract that, or the bad quarterback contract that, or the whatever contract that we were, thankfully, the person's finally run out that contract and we got rid of them and we have this extra cash. That's not the situation. The guys that we're losing this year are some of your more important players on this team, like Henry, Trent Brown, Onwenu, uh, you know, obviously born before he got injured. Uh, there's Uche, Duggar, um, Zeke. Right. I mean, as, uh, yeah. And there's a whole bunch of other guys that essentially, if they go out in the market, they're probably going to get paid more than they are this year. Right. They're going to uh, Jennings. That's another guy. So, like, you know, think about that. That's that's almost like if we go through that, if we took every no, no upgrades at any positions we don't need, but just replacing holes of potential free agents. So, say, first round would be kind of like a Trent Brown and then, say, Bourne um, on Wenu. Let's see, uh, Henry, Uche, Jennings, Duggar, and then there's Zeke. And, you know, see what I'm saying? Like, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my gosh. Like, those are all all guys that could, you know, you, you can put them in any order you want. But that there's more guys that we're probably, well, have the potential of losing, or if we let them walk, that... You know, we don't have enough draft picks. And then, so what happens? Oh, so what? We go get free agents. Here's the problem. Those guys are kind of the top of the guys at their free agent classes. So anybody we bring in is probably going to be downgrade in terms of a player. And the funny part is, I shouldn't say the funny, the unfortunate part is those guys are probably going to come in because all of a sudden, say, Trent, uh, Trent Brown or Hunter Henry or Kasicki or not Kasicki, but like Duggar or somebody gets paid a lot. Well, they're going to be pointing to their contract. And if they're like the second or third best in the a free agent class we're probably gonna be paying them more than uh we, we're playing our guys this year just because the 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 rise in tide in terms of uh salaries right so we could that all that free cash space could be completely absorbed just like that and it's not even bringing back better guys so all the ideas of possibly going to get a, a good quarterback 
or wide receiver in free agency is is not is not like going to happen if we let uh, unless we let a lot of guy of our guys go, and we don't have the draft capital right now to fill in all those holes. So we're gonna have to rely upon UDFA, and then maybe find some discounted free agents that we usually do. Yes, there's ways to kind of manipulate as best we can, but man, do we should we be like hoping? Right? I mean, hoping is not an investment, or in this case, a, you know, building a team strategy. You should not be hoping. You should be going in there and commanding and picking the best possible way of doing this. Right? So that's the big issue. Now, the other thing is, is the following year, in 2025, we have the same issue, but it's mostly on the defensive side of the ball. You got Barmore, Godchow, Peppers, uh, Tavai's in there, I think. That's just, un uh, again, the turnover is going to be bad for these next two seasons. And either way you look at it, like we don't have we don't have enough draft capital right now. Um, and maybe next year we might have enough draft capital, but it's a weaker draft. Right? Because if we let our, our guys go and get comp picks for them this offseason, the free agents, they can get some comp picks. Maybe next 2025 draft is more of our year. And we maybe we're a little more precise with who we're picking this year. But still, I think if you just want to put on a decent team for next year, my gosh. Anyway. So that's that's kind of where I'm going to be going here right off the bat with the the kind of the strategy here is a talking about what everybody hates about talking, which is possibly trading back in the draft. Um, now we could be in a good position because let's assume this, right? Right now, Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably your best player in the whole draft, right? And Drake May, Solid, Olu, all these guys are blue chip. I'd say you got blue chip guys for the most part all the way down to the mid, you know, mid rounds here. I wouldn't put Nate Wiggins in here. Fuaga, maybe. Trice, I'd probably move down a little bit. But I'd put Jane Daniels up a little bit more. Terry and Arnold. I don't know why Devontae Walker's now 20. Oh my gosh. PFF, what are you doing? Do you have anybody who proofreads this? Holy cow. I mean, Troy Franklin, I agree with, but you got some guys in this first round drip. You moved a, a Buka out of the first round. I didn't see. Wow. Keon Coleman's 47. This is nuts. All right. Well, wow. P we might have to switch up if PFF is going to be this nuts. All right. And you know what? It doesn't really matter that much. Actually, we're, we're talking about like, you know, the position rather than the individual player at this point. Um, where was I at? Uh, yeah, so trading back wouldn't be the worst idea because we need all those picks need to be filling in, potentially filling in holes and hopefully giving us an upgrade at the same time. Yes, we still need to go after a quarterback, but here's the crazy part. We don't actually need a quarterback in terms of depth, right? We have enough quarterbacks, at least in terms of like starting, starting caliber quarterbacks. Now you can put starting caliber in quotations there, but we have guys that can go out and at least put on an offense not great we do need to upgrade there don't get me wrong i've been saying it for a while we need to upgrade there but we might not be able to afford to upgrade this year because if someone wants to give us a lot of draft capital for marvin harrison jr it makes sense right because everybody can use a marvin harrison jr he's a wide receiver not one team can't just say well we can use you we ha you have multiple wide receivers you know on the field at one time usually right you only have one quarterback so if we can trade back and still have a shot at one of our top one of the top quarterbacks go for it because not everybody's going to want a quarterback some people are going to want a once uh once in a while, like i mean i say i hate to say generational but this guy's really good same thing with joe all brock bowers is one of the best tight ends in a very long time malik neighbors is could be a first round overall pick some years because he's that good that's how deep this draft class is so if you move in the top, within the top 10, you're going to get somebody that's going to be a needle mover for you, will be kind of the face of your franchise, still a promotable player for the craft for, you know, the crafts who are going to want somebody to put out there as like the number one guy, right? Um, but if you could unload, you can get a couple, like, think about this, Trey Lance, what was he like, what did he get, like two or three first round picks for that guy? So don't say like, and I didn't think he was that good, but think about what people are willing to pay to get somebody good you can transform your whole entire franchise with multiple first round picks if someone wants to pay me for marvin harrison jr or drake the shot of drake may i'll take it because 
Why? We're further away from being from turning this around. Again, remember, next year's free agent class and the following re- tr- within two years, more than 50% of your, your roster is going to turn over. Or you're going to be paying up a lot for aging players. See, like it, it's a it's a battle here. It's going it's a these pitfalls are a problem. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's see what we can get for a second round. See, like this would be a perfect situation. Washington probably needs a tackle. They can take Brock Powers or a tackle. They could take a quarterback. They could take Marvin Harrison Jr. If they don't, obviously the Cardinals would take more more of a be worth thinking of taking uh, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Or they would take Olu Fushano. Now Paris Johnson Jr., who they took last year, I guess could play right tackle. But I don't see them. I mean, I don't. Kyler Murray's expensive. I don't see them really moving off him. I mean, I guess they could. Now the question would be, hey, would they trade out? Maybe that's the risk you're running, which is if they trade out to somebody else and they take who you want but again if you miss out and it's it's giving you multiple first round picks that's fine now we can't do that with pff we can't show you know 2026 2027 first round picks from them but oh they don't think that would work oh you know what you know let's do this let's actually show let's show this And we'll give you like Mac Jones, right? Something like that, right? So you still get Drake May. You got all that draft capital. You might say this is unrealistic, but again, people have paid multiple first round picks for for Trey Lance. Okay. San Francisco is multiple first round picks for, for that guy. Wow. Um, now, Tyler Newbin would transform your defense. I shouldn't say transform, but would definitely bolster a major position, a big hole of not having a deep, a good, solid, deep, free safety. And he can play just about anywhere. I think his, his alignment is pretty impressive, but he's a good, I mean, coverage grades. Look at this. He's just a solid, well-rounded defensive back. Plays a deep box slot. So this guy plays. He's like 6'2", right? 6'2", 210 built um Quinian Mitchell would be another he's arguably your best corner in the draft look at this now he didn't have as many ball hawk situations this year but this guy in terms of like all right it's unbelievable now yeah he goes to Toledo you know he's not gonna always have like you would argue hey he's not going against top level talent but you watch his tape yeah smooth very smooth, open field. He's very quick. He's physically he's a beast too. So, good vert. Braswell I like too. So here's the thing: we have these three in a row. You can. This is where you can really bolster your offense and defense at the same time. Let's see what we can get. Thirty-seven. too many picks I'll take that though so we're getting a whole we're getting bolt next year we're getting we're compounding here all oh, still good still good all right so safety class is deep Quinian Mitchell's four corners going to be one of your best corner TJ Tampa's good too wide receivers at this point are not being taken off the board because PFF has shoved them down corners are getting a little thinner though so I'm gonna go here. Keon Coleman, who I'd like more. And then Newbin's still on there. Maybe I should have went with Newbin. Yeah, well. I think there's other opportunities for safeties. Rod Moore's not bad. I'm not entirely sold on him. He's good. I just don't think he's amazing. Yeah, I don't know. PFF sometimes. Now, he's an interesting one to consider. Not, I mean, it's the third round, but um, he plays both guard and center. And if Cole Strange is really beat up, this guy can play. It'd be, if, say, David Andrews doesn't, does come back, you can put him in there, plays, a little, plays guard, and then moves over to center until Strange comes back. Now, Tyler Guyton's a solid right tackle. 
Kingsley's Sumatea, Sumatamatea. There you go. Uh, he can play both left and right tackle. Peyton Wilson's your your best linebacker in the whole draft. Coverage stops. He's a coverage linebacker, but he's awesome run stopper. Freak. He can also rush too, so he can be a guy who uh, addresses. Mac Wilson Sr. potentially walking can uh, does a decent job with setting the edge. I shouldn't say setting the edge, but in terms of run stopping, um, he, that would alleviate maybe the Gen loss of Jennings and Uche too at the linebacker level. There's three linebacker level guys that potentially could be lost. I know we have Mapu in there, but uh, Mapu to me, not that he can't play at the linebacker level, I'm not saying that, um, but he might be looking towards that Duggar replacement because Duggar play basically plays in the box most of the time. So what do we do? We go probably another tackle. We got left, right? We got Jordan Morgan. So let's go with Tyler Guyton. I Suata Matia is very good. Uh, I probably should go with him. How many more? Is there any other offensive linemen on the board here? Sixty-nine for what? Edge. Here's your here's your straight up um, Jennings replacement if needed. Mason Smith is actually calling my name. I think though too, getting that D tackle potential replacement for Bar Barmore Insurance next year if he leaves. Uh, we got Scott Matlock, but he's kind of my uh, Lawrence guy back up we got the corners we need to get started picking up tight ends Braylon Allen's a good one to focus on if we lose Zeke I think the immediate term also needs to be yeah, so maybe we have to go well we could still do that because we're gonna have to, yeah, we'll still we're gonna have to do this. This is you're gonna hate it, but I'm I can justify that. Because he also plays edge. He played edge until he got injured. He actually I should say bounced back and forth. So let's do this. There's Allen, beautiful. All right, so we got our pass catching uh, running back. Receiving back, sorry. Oh, that's slowed down PFF dramatically. Come on. Put the brakes on too hard. Alright, so that leaves us what we need to get. Safety, I'll wait. 
like a proctor there. Perfect. So let's do... Bryce Foster as a center guard. Just in case our boy goes. John Trey, or we actually, never mind. We have receiving. Yeah, we have a, okay, so let's do Josh Proctor as a safety. And Hayden Hatton as a wide receiver. Okay. That's, I mean, this is overload, it, but it's also just showing you ideas of what we could do to try to move back and get a mass as much draft capital as possible because it's going to be needed. And I hate, see, like, this is the year where you, you should be doing that because you want to be rolling over, trying to get as many rookies, essentially as young as possible, because next year you're dealing with age at, at your defensive side. It's, and the, the problem is it's really a, a problem with the free agents not, the next couple years just not being not what you need and not enough of them and the problem is, is again this year and next year your guys are going to be kind of near the top of the free agent classes so you're going to be paying up for the guys you want to keep so what you could do is be letting them walk kind of getting comp picks but there would be such a vacuum over the next couple years you won't be able to field a decent team is it there's not it you're bleeding out probably more than you can bring in unless you do something like this, which is, I mean, again, this might be a complete exaggeration, not even a possibility, but just trying your best to just free up as much draft capital as possible, rolling over some to the next year. Now, let's talk about these, I guess. We can talk about these, why I picked these guys specifically and or more, maybe more about the position. Yes, we need to upgrade our quarterback. Um, you can afford to only score, let's see. There's a stronger correlation to losing a game if you throw two intercepts, sorry, if you cause two turnovers. Or is it interceptions? Interceptions. The interceptions. So you can, if you throw two interceptions, you're more likely to lose the game than if you were to throw three and a half touchdowns in the game. So a quarterback can hurt is it's their their ability to hurt you is is worse than or is, yeah, has a greater impact than their ability to help you. Right? Now that doesn't that simply doesn't you know doesn't really make sense, but if you think about it, when your quarterback has a really bad game, it's typically because they're throwing interceptions and you lose the game dramatically typically right um or it's like a game losing interception like it's critical whereas a touchdown yeah people throw touchdowns all the time and you still might not win the game you can throw a lot of touchdowns and actually still might not lose the game but you can only afford one or actually really just one solid interception a game and still have a good probability of winning the game so ball protection number one if your quarterback is not doing that this is what happens the offense can be beat up and, you know, the play calling might not be amazing, but you can still get through having a decent team, right? For example, last year. But when your quarterback does what happened this year, this is this is the result. And it, I guess the, the what I can say is look what's ha what Zappy's doing. He's not doing great, but we're like competitive in games, right? In some cases, it's your receivers dropping balls. Like, I mean, we would have won the Chargers game if Thornton didn't drop the ball. Um, now, you're probably rolling your eyes like, oh, we don't need a corner. Actually, we do. We do need a corner. And if he is there with your second pick, it would actually be smart because we need another perimeter corner because if you look back on who they're targeting, they're not targeting Jonathan Jones. Right? Right? When, Do when Gonzo and Go Jones were on the field at the same time, that defense was looking great. Right? We lost games because of Mac Jones during that time. And then, you know, obviously when Gonzo got hurt in the Dallas game, it took a major step back on the defense because they went after Jack Jones. They went after uh, Miles Bryant. In the t I mean, Miles Bryant was covering C.D. Lamb for the rest of that game. I mean, look what happened. Um... And then, oh, and then, you know, Jack Jones being gone. We bring in J.C. Jackson. Who did, the, who did Miami go after? J.C. Jackson the whole entire game. 
what happened yesterday against the Chiefs? Austin, uh, Miles, or yeah, Austin. And you know, it's it's who they're targeting. They're not going after Jonathan Jones. They and they would have to be forced to be going after Gonzo and Jonathan Jones if both if Gonzo was back. But here's the thing: I want Jonathan Jones off the perimeter, not because I don't believe in him. I think he can easily play there. But I want him to start taking over that role of being the safety, the the slot safety, the slot corner, right? That hybrid position, man, manning it up, being in the middle of the field, and and picking up and making sure the guys on the perimeter are just locked down on the wides and leaving him to handle the slot corners, the slot t tight ends, you know, sl sorry, slot wide receivers and the tight ends coming out, right? Leaving Duggar to do Duggar and Peppers to be Peppers. You have those guys doing their thing, coming up run stopping. You have Jonathan Jones in there doing his thing. You guys are in good shape. But that you need another corner. And corners are the second, in terms of the drafting hierarchy, they're second. Why? Because they're expensive. And when they're like, well, we're say veteran contracts, really good free agent veteran corners are expensive to, to bring in. You don't want to be paying those guys. You want to get you want to get rookies on rookie contracts because they're relatively cheap, obviously. And then they're one of the positions where if you get an upgrade on your corner, your team typically does better the following season. Now Gonzo, until he got hurt, was kind of one of your best players on defense. He was looking great. He was shutting down some of the best receivers. I shouldn't say shutting down, but basically cooling off, if not shutting down some of the best receivers in the game. I mean, if we had that for the rest of the year, I'm, I, I think just on Gonzo, I think we would have had a couple more wins here. At least, just because of Gonzo. So you have another guy, two guys, all of a sudden your team looks a lot better. Um, Keon Coleman, obviously we still need that X receiver. I think he's still one of the best receivers physically and talent-wise in the whole draft. Him at 37 is absurd, but we could go after, say, uh, Brendan Rice here. Um, getting Morgan, Kingsley, Sumatia. Suata, Suata Matia, uh, left tackle. He plays left now, but he plays right. Um, Jordan might not be the best. I Maybe Patrick Paul might be a better option because he plays a little bit more of our style. Whereas Jordan Morgan's much more of a, I think more of a, yeah. I would say he's better at zone blocking. Yeah, but I, I'm sure he can play. Um, trading back and Matlock again, adding depth at that D for the D tackles that might lose move uh, lose next year. Peyton Wilson, best coverage linebacker in the draft, also one of the best run stopping and can rush the ball. So, kind of addressing the potential losing losing Uche Jennings and um, Mac Wilson Sr. Marshawn Nealon would be a much more of a Jennings, but he can play some linebacker and he can play. I mean, he plays down and he plays upright, you know, very, I know people roll their eyes, but it's very Parsons-esque. And then Mason Smith, D-tackle, probably rolling your eyes there, but he also plays edge. He plays a good D-end. Um, so yeah, getting him would be adding depth at both positions, more of a Barmore insurance there, but then also Dietrich Wise for the long term. Yeah, so we have, I know we have Keon White. But, yeah, Keon White's more of the edge D-tackle, where this guy would be more of like a D-tackle that can play edge. Um, Barner, one of your better comprehensive tight ends in the draft. Really good run blocker. Has good hands. Big dude, 6'6", like 250. So, adding some, obviously adding some help in terms of blocking up front. So, we, I think we need that. Um, Braylon Allen would be good, a good solid Zeke replacement. Uh, Dylan Lobey is your receiving third down back, but also can play slot. He A good percentage, is, I think, again, I think it's like 11% of his snaps were at the slot, or, or at least, yeah, at a receiver position. Bryce Foster, a center. Big time, big, heavy, strong dude. 6'5", like 320, shot putter, monster dude. Um, we don't know what's going on with uh, Andrews. Yeah, we do have Jake Andrews. But I'm not, I don't know. If Again, you're, gonna, you're still going to need another depth piece there anyway. So Bryce Foster would be, and I think you could probably play some solid guard too. You know, it's just adding, again, depth at a position where we might lose two of our best 
offensive lineman this year, and just at losing the depth would be an issue. Uh, Josh Proctor, good hybrid safety, can play both in the slot, can play deep, can play in the box. He plays the bullet safety at Ohio State, so he knows how to play everywhere, basically. And Hayden Hatton, very underrated wide receiver. He's an FCS receiver, but watches tape, never drops the ball, crisp routes, good vert, good speed, everything you want, good length, big catch radius. All right, so that's let's so that's kind of like the optimized, right? So let's just do the straight through now. Just to get the idea. So what? Yeah, we have Drake May. Boom, done, great. You can take you can argue Daniels if you want to. I'm gonna go with May. Tackle, go down to Morgan. Boom, done. Now that leaves us at wide receiver for 66. I think I'm gonna go after Brendan Rice if he's still there. Maybe if anybody else wide receiver. Ricky Persall would be good, but I don't think he's exactly... You know what? Johnny Wilson might be a better option. Oh, Brendan Rice is gone. So I'm going to go with Johnny Wilson easily. Boom, done. Uh, he, my, my, he'd be more of your Gesicki replacement anyway. He's like 6'7". So that leaves us with probably another wide receiver if we have to. Is... Oh, they took Marshawn Nealand. So I'm I, this now I'm going to basically have to go with Mason Smith here. Unless the unless there's a talent wide receiver, right? Decorian Clark, I doubt I can get him next. Sakari Franklin's pretty good. All right, let's do that. Uh, Blake Corum wouldn't be that bad here. I think the yeah tight end would also be. A little bit higher on my list here. I don't know. Mason Smith to me would be a needle mover though. Blake Corum, I can get I can get Blake Corum out of Taj. He's not a good receiver. He's not really been asked to do it that much, but I think his hand size is a major concern. I don't think he has big hands. I don't think he's gonna be a big receiving back. Trey Benson would probably be a better pick here. Bigger dude, bigger hands, better top end speed. I think Mason Smith might be the bigger needle mover here, though. Didn't have a great year, but he got injured last year, basically in the first game. Yeah, eight snaps. He might go back, though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take him, but he might be another guy that goes back. Now, why am I doing that? Again, it's bar more insurance and then adding an edge. Somebody who can play out there. At least, yeah, because I mean, if you're going to, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it later. So we lost, okay, so we still have to go with Loby. There's at least somebody who can catch the ball out of the backfield super fast. Again, can play out wide if he needs to. All right, there's your tight end that you can pick up. All right, we're moving here. We're still, we still got it. So now we have to look for safety slash coverage linebacker. Still another option there. Uh, yeah, probably safety. I'm not big on Aubrey Brooks or Catalan. He's been injured. Josh Proctor again. Or John Tra This guy's the guy to keep an eye on. John Tra uh, Hunter. Impressive. Hayden Hatton. Yeah, I think we have to go with Hayden Hatton again, right? Because we picked up Johnny Wilson, but we didn't pick up a, an X. We didn't pick up a wideout. So we picked up, yeah, we didn't pick up a born replacement. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Not the best, but good. They didn't like me going after these guys because I was overdrafting them, per se. But, but again, he's got the edge a aspect to it. Yeah, we've been missing this guy. This would be a replacement maybe for Hunter Henry. Um, but he's also just a... He plays H-back, too. So you can kind of get like a little bit of blo a blocking fullback uh, assignment out of him once in a while. All 
Yeah, he wouldn't be a bad, like, use check type of guy. Hmm, that's something to think about. All right, so let's say we go, we don't target a quarterback, and we go with Marvin Harrison Jr. because he's just that good, right? And that's, we're not, we're, we're not convinced on either, any of the three top uh, quarterbacks. leaving us now Shador I'm gonna Shador and let's take a look at the quarterback see like to me Shador Beck he's the next person that'll be there so he's either gonna get picked really early or there's people looking at this and like oh my gosh like why would I why would I go after a quarterback when I have this in here right these guys oh my gosh which is true because I think you know you gotta <laughs> you're gonna be paying for it later if you don't pick up guys like honestly like Keon Coleman getting to the back half of the second round is would be absurd even Chris Braswell making it getting passed by is kind of crazy Quinion Mitchell Jordan Morgan these guys are very good Newbin the fact that he's even these guys outside the first is kind of crazy to me I like Lasseter he's okay he's a guard but anyway let's get to it uh what should we do me would be like get Keon Coleman too <laughs> but Jordan Morgan and we'll see what we get at 66 we either get we actually maybe get McCarthy because people don't need quarterbacks so we're SOL on quarterbacks here so we have to go with Michael Pratt which I don't I don't mind I think Michael Pratt in many ways once we get through the senior bowl and um the combine and the pre-draft process will probably be a top 50 pick so I'm good with getting him here he could now. This is this would be the thing, which is either we're bringing in a, you know, a bridge quarterback in free agency, or we're trying to, you know, this would be the process of like maybe we can find some guy and he pushes Mac and he pushes and there's a three-way competition, right? For quarterback. That might not be what happens. Don't get all crazy. I'm just. Again, possibilities, being prepared. Right? I'm still going to go after Mason Smith. The D-tackle slash edge combination is just too hard to pass. Ray Davis is not a bad... He can catch the ball. Yeah, he's got good, decent receiving. He's good. Uh, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. I don't know if he's going back. Oh, he can't? Okay. Somebody to consider. But I'm still going with Lobie. Again, that's just the diver the versatility is what I'm looking at here. Because if we can't get, right, if we can't get a lot of draft picks, I'm picking guys that have potential to play multiple positions, right? So let's just talk about the, I mean, Mason Smith, D-tackle plus edge, right? And then I went with Lobie, who can play, um, obviously, a running back, receiving back, and he's, he can go out wide, and he's one of the best kick putt returners in FCS. Guy's great. Just versatility all over the place. Now here, I'm going to go with Ben, ben Sinnott, right? Why? Tight end. He can play in tight. Good blocking tight. Can play out, split in the slot, and he can play in the backfield in the, as the H-back. Which can, again, help you, again, with blocking. Blocking, blocking, blocking. We need to improve that. If you're going to have a first-year quarterback, get guys that can protect his backside. Um... And then go again. Versatility. Josh Proctor. Guy plays all over the place, right? Look at I me. Mean, look at this. This guy's going to be 81 grade. Solid coverage. Look at that. Bullet safety. Josh Proctor. This guy's somehow going to make it. It's 230. I mean, that's crazy. See, that was all versatility. That was the best way of going about that. Because we need to get guys who can at least come in and do multiple things. They're not niche. This might be my favorite. At least with what was presented. Yeah. The crazy one that you might think I'm nuts for even suggesting would be really early. And now, they probably don't have him. I think he was in the fourth round the last time in, in PFF. Would be getting Cooper BB as our second pick. He's a guard. He plays right guard. Right now, that would be a nice, easy replacement for Wenwenu. 
but he also can play both right and left tackle. And he's very good at it. Um, if we don't like it, I mean, and that's the thing. It would be like, well, we can get that if we still, if we're going to keep either on Wenu or um, Trent Brown. Right? And I, I, I think we have to try to keep on Wenu. And in that case, you get a big left tackle. That's fine. But if we go, if we get rid of on Wenu and Trent Brown for some reason wants to come back, I think BB would be a great uh, guy to target here. And they can give me bad grades, but that's just because I'm overdraft. I've overdrafted this guy. Technically, overdrafted this guy. Overdrafted this guy. Mason Smith. They're not going to give me a good grade on that, but whatever. I don't mind this one if we don't get the quarterback in the first round. The second round quarterback is going to be uh, picking him at 34, unless it's like for some reason Daniels bleeds down or if they're really like it kind of comes down to like what you believe in right i mean do you believe that bo nix is actually decent i think bo nix can possibly play at the nfl level as a starter i don't i don't think he's great i think what you see right now is what he is but he doesn't mess up he doesn't really throw a lot of interceptions he's actually a decent like he's mobile in the in the yeah he's mobile in general but he's actually, he's very good pocket presence uh not too many major injuries to his name. Um, size, build, speed, nothing. Nothing's f freaking me out about him. It's just that he doesn't have that wow factor. But, I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, if you get a wow, fa if you get a wow factor here, then what's wrong with Bo Nix? Yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Um, now, I hope you guys at least enjoyed this, found this entertaining. Uh, it, to me, I think the it's it's going to be an interesting draft. Probably one of the most important ones in, in the team's history. It actually will be because not only because it's going to probably get a high draft pick, but again, this next year, this this free agency, the next free agency is going to next year's free agency is it's going to cause a lot of roster turnover. And if it doesn't, your team's coming back for the next several years, basically looking the same. So the only way you can do that, if you're going to bring your guys back, the only way you can really change it is through the draft. And if it is going to be looking the same, your your goal is to kind of contain these guys you, or maintain the guys you have, your big needle movers have to come from the draft. Um, and, you know, some development and stuff like that, but you're going to have to really make this year about big splashes. Maybe, you know, nuke as much draft capital into this year as possible big big names and maybe that's enough to really rebound for next year i don't know but it, it's uh, to me it's it's a several year rebuild to really get to like strong contention i think three years at best that's if you hit several drafts in a row you get draft capital out of this one and you draft really well and you are able to bring some guys back to make a core this offseason It'd be interesting to be the guy making those decisions, but that's what they get paid for. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. At least this was, again, semi-entertaining. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.